Life is short. Eat your caviar with your animal crackers. I bear the responsibility of all of my decisions. Good thing I'm always right. Hello! I'm Hunter Harden. And I'm Papa the Bear. And, and welcome, welcome to the Real House Bears! You never know who's going to show up, especially on this season finale night. Hello, it is me, Heather Gay. <laughs> some people are calling me a saint. Some people are calling me the godmother <laughs> yes. of Bravo. I, Here. I support the godmother of Bravo. Mm. I will kiss Heather Gay's hand. Ugh. I'll kiss Heather. Yeah. Heather Gay would not do that to me, you brat. Mm -hmm. Do not call me Heather Gay. Call me Godmother. <laughs> I told her off, and I stood up for every housewife out there that has to suffer on the internet. Yes, ma'am. We are going to make an example out of her and burn her at the stake. Yes, Mother Gay. <laughs> Do not make me break character. <laughs> <laughs> that reaction surprised even me. <laughs> get it, Mother Gay. And I'm going to get it on your podcast. Yes. So thank you for letting me be on. This is going to be me the entire time Hunter Hardin is off today. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it absolutely is not. It's, but... kind of, it's kind of fun to talk that way. Is it? Yeah, totally. Oh my god, thank you. Um, can you also, like, on my intro to this, can you, like, give me, like, a godlike entrance? Like, choir we'll music. We'll see. We'll see about that. Don't get mm -hmm. too excited about it. I'm too excited about this damn episode. You all, I mean, we are in honor of the MVP of possibly the greatest Housewives episode of all time. We are wearing our Heather Gay. I'm wearing my Good Time Girl shirt. You're wearing your Beauty Lab and Laser shirt. All hail Mother Gay and all hail the cast of Salt Lake City. Have a moment, bitch. This, this is like episode a, was mind blowing. This was like the first time. Oh, I don't want to break anything. I don't want to give anything away. So, yeah. um, but if what if people haven't watched the episode yet, they only listen to our podcast. So, I want to save the reveal, like the ultimate thing, for when it happens actually on the show. Oh my gosh. This, I mean, if Vanderpump Rules can get an Emmy nomination, then there's no reason why this episode does not get an Emmy nomination. I have never seen an episode of reality TV that has rocked my world like this. I wish they would have called it the family of four because, man, that beach scene oh, with that, the four of them, that was like some movie stuff. That, that was, was like some Godfather. Martin Scorsese right there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was this whole, well, 16 minutes into this episode until the end is just cinematic. It's unbelievable. But and, I want to know this. And, and it, oh, go ahead. You know, the mystery I'd ha like to have revealed is why did you give us like three or four supersized episodes this season and this episode was not supersized? Oh my gosh, I literally was just going to say, and it wasn't a supersized episode. <laughs> I'm like, Peacock, give us a supersized version of this without the censorship. I kind of wish they didn't. I'm, I'm glad that they, they didn't drag it out because I was on the edge of my seat this entire episode. It was... Uh, nerve wracking um i'm nervous no i'm shaking yeah me too i know so am i well you know in the very very beginning of this episode they were like at the dinner that takes place at the end of the episode heather telling the women down at the beach that all this stuff is going on but they show all kinds of little clips of like meredith saying heather you've been narrating me for four years and lisa and whitney going at it and all of these different things that happened at this dinner that we never see that's true they did not show any of that they, they could have made a supersized episode but to be honest with you like they only gave like two people to argue with each other, and then they gave Heather the helm I mean, to go at it. So it was kind of interesting. But yeah, I do want to see the uncensored um, episode. Maybe they'll, I don't, maybe they Heather will really did. It. Heather carried this episode. And again, this is one of the best episodes of reality TV ever. I'm, yeah. I've seen it four or five times, maybe by now. <laughs> when I have nothing else to do, or when I, even when I have something to do, it's on like riveting. It's perfection. 
Should we could just get right into it? Yeah, let's just get into it. I don't think we have anything. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Yeah, great. Happy New, New Year. New Year. Oh, happy it's, New yeah, Year. Yeah, it's a new year with the real happy house. Happy New best. Year, same old us. Same. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I have a lot more hair, but <laughs> my only resolution is to call and FaceTime my friends more often. Oh, are you putting me on the spot with something to do? No, you don't have to have a resolution. It's just really uh, mostly my best friend Mary. We're like, you know what? We need to do that. And I was like, well, maybe I shouldn't just limit it to her. I hate it. I hate talking on the phone. Oh, it's so the worst I'm thing in the world. I'm not going to do it. But my <laughs> resolution is to talk less on the phone with people. <laughs> Here you I go. Think. Yeah, I agree, because I hate it when you go on the phone. I'm like, oh, my God, will you shut up? Like, oh, my gosh, sometimes I'll get stuck on the phone with my sister, Sarah, or even sometimes my mom, and sometimes Dave. Yeah. yeah, I get stuck on the phone a lot, I guess. Not too But long. not it's random. Not, like, it's uh, not uh, it's exa- I have to walk around this house constantly while I'm on the phone. Are, is, are some of our <laughs> listeners this way? Like, when you're on the phone at home, do you sit down and just sit there and talk on the phone, or do you walk through the house? Like, do, like, figure eights around the house, because, like, you just have to walk. While you talk. I'm using headphones of some sort, and I'm busy. I'm not walking around the house, but I'm doing something. I can't. If I'm watching something or doing something, I will lose focus on what I'm talking about. <laughs> and they will be like, huh? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, there it goes getting right into the episode. Let's move on. I've had enough of the conversation. Thank you. Bermuda, night four. It's a dark and stormy night. As we were just <laughs> saying. <laughs> dark and stormy. That's the drink. It is. You the... just said it's a dark and stormy night. And it is. Wow. And that was totally unintentional. We should have had dark and we should have looked up how to make dark and stormies. Listen, I'm mad. We should. I have got some Vita tequila over there. I didn't make a te- Vita cocktail like I should have. Like, I failed on that point because I was so, like, again, Heather Gay is there. There. Can we get into this episode? Thank you. <laughs> so, <laughs> as we were just mentioning a moment ago, Heather is telling the girls that there's some information that she just recently got and it shows again a whole lot of scenes that are not ever shown in the episode later where there's contention between various women they the producers definitely tried to make it look like it wasn't almost like all at monica Um, yeah the editing was sometimes difficult to follow the timeline but nonetheless the editing was because gorgeous. i thought i knew what it was that she ha- was going to say because we heard about it from... oh yeah we were convinced it was about the beauty lab bill yeah because we, we heard <laughs> about that so we thought that was it so this show real that shaw this show definitely shaw me yeah <laughs> so we're gonna rewind eight hours earlier oh my gosh this it's i'm having a hard time following I know. The timeline? Yeah. <laughs> well, luckily, we only have one more jump of timeline later on in the episode. So, you know, women getting ready. Monica goes into Whitney's room to quote unquote wake her up. No way she was asleep because she's got full glam on. <laughs> Whitney's face looks stunning. She, but she like puts on her sunglasses and you see her lipstick. She takes off her sunglasses and she looks like she's ready for the day. So I'm like, hmm. Oh, um, but Monica's like, so I kind of forgot since we hadn't seen the show since before Chris or since before, you know, in a few weeks Years. that it ended up that we ended with Heather and Whitney and Whitney saying you exploded my vagina. Uh, yeah. Running through the streets of uh, Bermuda. Right. So Monica asked Whitney if she's going to talk to Heather today. Whitney, of course, is going to talk to Heather today, but she still feels like there's a double standard going on here. And she was really upset that Heather wasn't willing to speak talk to her about it and squash it last night but she'll get over it but then monica tells whitney a story about when monica was looking for whitney and asked where she was lisa barlow said oh she's probably somewhere being dramatic yeah just stirring the pot man she's stirring the pot but you know any of those women could have said that about any of those women I say it about you all the time. This is always about me. (laughs) So Whitney goes to Heather's room and immediately apologizes that um, she didn't, you know, that what she said really created such a reaction. And Whitney was like, I didn't expect that reaction. And Heather was like, to be honest with you, I didn't expect that reaction either. Yeah, and to be honest, when um, she's trying to explain it to Heather why she was mad, it kind of still doesn't make sense because Heather's yeah. like, you read it. you you I read it to you, so you did know it. So I think 
Whitney just wanted to be more like, it was just more shocking to read it myself. I think that's what she was trying to say. Yeah. I think you're right. I think uh, since Whitney... I read it myself, since time has passed, and I've had all this backlash against all that stuff that did happen with my husband's sexual yeah. um, picture or whatever, um, you know, and, and it just made me I upset, just... and, I, and I'm drunk, and I'm tired. And I just <laughs> lost my friend, and I'm having marital problems. It, Exactly, <laughs> you know? exactly. Let's just lay it all out. But they do um, hug it out and stuff. And, and Heather, just be quiet. Just quit saying stuff. Because <laughs> she's like, yeah. oh, Whitney, she doesn't bug me at all. And I'm just like, Heather, just accept the apology. And don't make little, like, because I do know that Heather makes comedy. She uses comedy to you get around stressful situations. I mean, yeah, she, comedy is just her tool. Yeah. And sometimes it comes off a little bit snarky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm the crazy one. Absolutely. Um, they go scooter riding, which looks like a blast, except for Meredith doesn't even know the last time she's driven a car. I mean, the last time she probably driven a car was like when she was 18 or something. I mean, good lord. But that, what a life! I want to be. I want to be like that. I'd be like, I don't want to have to ever drive ever. <laughs> I know, right? I want to get to that point where I'm like, well, what is this? Is this me, a steering wheel? Actually, nowadays, you are almost at that point. I kind of drive 90s. I know, because you don't time. let me. <laughs> I don't know if that's true. But anyway, <laughs> Monica can't drive. No, she goes, she crashes right into the van. <laughs> and you can tell this training guy is frustrated with all of them already. Because he's like, only one person at a time. <laughs> they one person, and they go. all just go off into their own thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's crazy. But I, um, I'm glad the goats made an appearance. Oh, those are hey, bitch goats. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bitch. <laughs> I love that. That was hilarious. Okay, so would you go to a perfumery or clothes shopping? Well, it's I would want to go with Heather, but I would rather go clothes shopping. I would have loved to go to that perfumery place because it sounded like they had, like, perfumes that were, like, found on ship. Yeah, wrecks. that's what it sounded like she said, yeah. Like, that's crazy that is pretty I'd be crazy. like oh this is the shipwreck that killed 88 souls you know <laughs> but i just don't generally wear cologne no so I don't. and i have been to um i have been to a, a european perfumery like they uh mentioned there in the store so I'd be like i've already done this but it was pretty cool that they had those rare perfumes. oh yeah i think you said when she when angie was asking monica have you ever been to a perfumery in like europe and my husband's like yeah because he's, my husband is convinced that he's not like Lisa Barlow, but he is so, like, the more I see it, the more I'm like, wow, you really are Lisa Barlow. Like, a couple days ago when you're just trying to say, like, I just don't think that I'm a shy, I don't have, a, I don't have an ego when I think about others a lot, don't I? And you're, like, wanting an answer from me. I'm like, okay, Lisa Barlow, yes, you're amazing. Lisa Barlow is an amazing human being. I guess I'm on the skewer this week. <laughs> it's a new year, you guys. <laughs> so when Monica's card declined, do you think it was A, the international setting wasn't turned on, or B, she had to move some money real quick? Oh, jeez. I didn't think about that. <laughs> um, both. I think both. And apparently, I didn't notice myself, but I've, I mean, I've read so much, so many tweets and Instagram memes this week about it. Apparently, she was using, I don't know the name of it, one of those cards that you kind of like prepay. Something, oh, like or, a city card or some, something like that? Something. I can't remember the name of it, but I didn't notice that myself. But it all, <laughs> I just don't trust anything about you Monica. Guys, people you know? are, and, and people are sleuths on the internet. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. So... They are done shopping. They meet at the wharf. They go back to their mansion on the uh, on the water. One hour later, looks like the storms are rolling in. Listen, there's been thunder through this entire episode. In the background, they've been playing it. It is so stressful. And the thunder rolls. <laughs> yes. Heather gets a phone call. Oh, my God. Here we go, you guys. Now, y'all, in this episode, we're not going to have... We're going to have more than sound bites. We're going to have, like, sound mouthfuls. Yeah. We're going to have sound meals. Like this. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> you 
you are not getting sound bites, y'all. These are sound like mouthfuls, like plates, dinners. <laughs> I mean, Heather's two monologues later are sound filet mignons. I mean, come it's on. true. And I, yeah, so I agree with you 100%. So, I mean, I, we can't talk about her getting the phone call without playing the whole entire segment of her getting the phone call. Okay. What did you find out? Are you kidding me right now? Shut the f up. I'm trembling like trembling. I cannot believe it's her. How could she do this to us? I'm freaking the f out. I'm freaking the f out. You guys, no, seriously. Seriously, no. You guys, for real. And then, of course, it cuts to a commercial if you're, uh, if you're watching on Peacock or on live television like a weirdo like me. And so then we have four hours after Heather has received this phone call. Oh, my God. Where are we? <laughs> We're at dinner. We're at okay, dinner. Okay, okay. <laughs> We've been going forward ever since we went back at the beginning. Oh, my gosh. So this is too much, Barry. Dinner, women follow. getting into glam. They get together for dinner. Um, and Heather says something, I think it was in her confessional, she's like, what's about to go down is going to change our relationships forever. I mean, it's intense. She's hanging on to this horrible, horrible news. Ugh, so. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> so at the table, the women find their, like, Pioneer Day dolls. Terrifying. <laughs> yes. But they're, they're not sitting where their own doll is. And Heather tells them that the theme for the night is the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> I do need to find like a thunder and lightning soundbite. And the thunder rolls. Like that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, unsolved mysteries, shipwrecks. The women will ask the women, other woman who is represented by the doll in front of her, what kind of unsolved mystery do you have about that woman despite spending so much time together? Well, I, I thought we were going to do a back and forth earlier when you said mysteries, and I was like shipwrecks, and I thought you were going to do sunken treasure. And I, I didn't have the whole list. Unsolved mysteries. So I just said shipwrecks out of nowhere, and he just kept going with no, it. No, I, I thought we, I mean, I thought it made sense. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> We're just so overstimulated it is, about it's this a lot. episode. It's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> okay, so Whitney goes first and asks Lisa, why is it okay for you to be dramatic when it's not okay for me be to be dramatic? Well, they go back and forth and say dramatic 15 times. This, it's the most dramatic thing I've seen. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most dramatic thing that's ever been dramaed. <laughs> and it is the most Lisa thing Lisa has ever Lisa. But I love her. But really, Lisa just says, listen, Whitney, we can all be dramatic. <laughs> yeah, she's like, I know I'm dramatic. <laughs> and then she just puts the conversation to sleep. She's like, and my doll's done. Yeah. Done. Going to sleep. Bye. So I figured there would be a whole lot of this going on considering the scenes we saw at the very beginning of the episode. Oh, I forgot. I did write this down about Lisa. She says, what I observed with my two eyeballs is you being dramatic. <laughs> I, like, I, mean, yes. I mean, it's pretty yes. right there. Yes. <laughs> oh, Lisa Barlow. And, it's, and again, it's not such a bad thing. No. We're all a bunch of We're drama queens. We're all dramatic. So then yeah. Meredith has Heather's doll and asks Heather why Heather hasn't had her back more, especially in the cave the previous night or the night before. I don't remember when. But really, Heather's response is because we all believed Monica. Yeah, this uh, um, segue, what she says right here to try to turn this storyline into Monica was great. 
Like, it really was. She smooth. said she's like she. She said we believe Monica because she had the proof. She had the evidence. She had the yeah, she, even she lets, had the timeline. No, she lets Monica say it. She's like Monica. Why did we believe you? Oh, that's and right. And Monica that's right. said, "Well, I don't know. Probably because I had the evidence. I had the proof. I had the DMs. I had the timeline, and I threw myself right into that fire, and I owned it, and that it just it added up." It's because I had the proof, and I have the the DMs, and I have the timeline, oh, and I had. I mean, she so was that was a Monica lawyer said, thing, right? There. Monica said that first. Yeah, she did. So that was lawyer. So that was some awesome lawyering thing yeah. that, that Heather Gay just did. That was oh, awesome. So good. Ugh. And then Heather's turn is next, and she has Meredith side eye doll, but she's like, you know, Meredith, I don't think there's anything unsolved about you anymore. Yeah. But there's something, an unsolved mystery I'd like to know about Monica. Oh my gosh. Who is the real Monica? This is the question of tonight. This is the question This is the of million the dollar week. question. <laughs> Heather, you know, she's like, we bonded about being mothers of mothers of daughters. I, you know, I really thought you were such an open book and such a truth teller. Mm but that's not who you seem to be. The real Monica doesn't want to be our friend, but she wants to profit off of our lives and pain. Oof. I know who you really are, and who you really are is... Okay. And then they just stop. Uh, yeah. It, uh, now where are we going? Where are we going? Now we're going backwards. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Two hours earlier. I need a chart or something in front of me so I can mark down the We started off are. at the end, then went to the beginning, <laughs> kept going forward until now, which we're skipping back to. <sighs> and this is that beautiful beach scene. Like, there is a strange, ominous filter on the camera. You could see that it's unsaturated yeah. a little bit. Like, you could... And there's like a bluish hue mm -hmm. on it. Very... But the the wind, the way Heather is standing, it it, it feels so much like the family. Yeah. Like the family is gathering together because there's a snitch in the family, and oh, I yeah. know it's your friend, your brother, et cetera, et cetera. But we gotta ice them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was so intense. Like I've never seen The Godfather, but I figured that was a scene from The Godfather. <laughs> right? It's oh my gosh. <laughs> So Heather, even before she says a word hardly, is already emotional. Nervous and shit. Oh, my gosh. All these, like, can you imagine the tension walking up to somebody on the beach with just you guys? Like, I have something to say and is shaking. I would be so nervous. I, well, I mean, Lisa and Meredith and Whitney are about to pee themselves. So she's like, Heather starts off, we come a, a long way as four. And I... It, the first time I watched it, I was like, I kind of get why Angie K is not there, but I kind of don't get why Angie K is there. But I think it's really just a, about. I think it's because the she four of us have been dealing with this this IG page for four years, and Angie's new to the family, yeah. so she can't be trusted yet. Yeah, and so, plus she hasn't really been raked over the coals by them, like you. like the other ladies have yes. been. So Monica's not who she says she is. She's not our friend. She is someone, I've practically transcribed everything that Heather said. She's like, she's someone who has schemed and worked to infiltrate our Fred group, which is like infiltr, oh, uh, anyway. Uh, the person whose birthday we celebrated, who we supported and defended is Reality Von Teese. And I was like, who's that? <laughs> I well, I knew I was familiar with it, but I mean, M Lisa and Meredith and Whitney almost fell to the sand. I mean, everybody like jaw dropped. I loved uh, Drunk Drawn's drawing of this episode. Oh my gosh. It is hilarious how yes. far Lisa Barlow's jaw has dropped. <laughs> <laughs> so we find out, for those who don't know, that Reality Von Teas is an Instagram account, or maybe even also, it sounds like a Twitter, because Heather mentioned tweets that was originally created to go after and bring down Jen Shaw, but eventually expanded to going after, you know, essentially all the Salt Lake City housewives. You know, character assassinations. So Heather's hairdresser, Tanisha, 
girl, let's get her on the podcast. Right? Uh, well, she's been p- posting plenty on social media for the past few days. She used to be Monica's, it seems like, like number one best friend. Um, and she's also Heather's hairdresser. So, but, you know, Heather has been suspicious all along, just the way that Monica deals with sensitive information. And just like how we all have been feeling about Monica. Like, yeah. no, we haven't trusted her since the second or third episode. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So um, we hear the Beauty Lab story about how there were three Monicas in the system with three different last names, but all the same birthday. Note to self, if I'm going to try to scheme someone, use different birthdays. Well, that's a great, uh, yeah, please tell everybody. <laughs> One of those Monicas hadn't paid her beauty lab bills. And finally, what Meredith told Heather, which we said last week, just made sense. When Meredith was like, the reason why I called Monica is because I was receiving DMs about the stuff she was saying. Mm-hmm. I... Not once in this episode do, do the women ever give Meredith her her apology. I know. I, I'm the sure whole they time, will at the reunion. Like when they're standing there doing the family thing, I was waiting for them all to go like, Meredith, we're sorry. <laughs> but just like the rest of us, kind of one of the final clickers was when Monica was on the beach saying, "Girl, I would I would take screenshots and send DMs." Mm-hmm. Oh she my god! A, but we were all like, "Oh my gosh, Monica has to be behind this," mm-hmm. you know. So um, Heather called Tanisha. Tanisha came clean, gave Heather all of the screenshots, all of the evidence. Heather just sent them to someone whose name was bleeped out. But they did, in fact, confirm that Monica was behind Reality Von Teese. It had to have been Lisa's cyber team that she was talking about. <laughs> you're, you're right. Yeah. Lisa wouldn't want their names to get out. Yeah, because those are her cyber That's family. fair. That's yeah. fair. But Heather tells the women that she's going to confront Monica at dinner tonight and wants their support. My God. Now, nomination for Best Supporting Actress is Meredith Marks here. When she gets all emotional about, I'm tired of people trying to attack Mm -hmm. us or whatever, Mm -hmm. and like the wind is blowing and she's wrapped in her pashmina. And and, hair. Yes. uh, So... Kudos, props, you know, again, supporting actress nom to <sighs> Meredith Marks for the family on the beach. <laughs> um, well, then it goes back to dinner. So even though there's only like 15 minutes of the episode left to cover, let's take a break because we might talk about it for who yeah. knows how long. Oh my goodness. All right, we'll get right back to this. Bye. Bye. Gonna wet my whistle because it's kind of a lot of information. This is Heather Gay from The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, and you're listening to The Real House Bears Podcast. Okay, so Heather has two really amazing monologues in this dinner. We're back at the dinner. We're back at normal time. No more time warping. Oh, thank goodness. No more alternate universes. Mm -hmm. We're back where we were. We're back where we started, in a way. But Heather uses Monica's words right against her. You are reality Montese. No. You are an internet troll. You are a cyber bully. You have been tweeting and undermining and bullying all of us for four years. You are reality Montese. I have the facts to prove it. And I have texts from your phone number. Wait, you what? Say- I'm applying to be friends with these girls. Are you as Reality Bontees? I want to see your right now. Yeah, I would love to see oh my gosh, right that's now. That's how you know I'm telling the truth. I have your perfect formula. Receipts, proof, timeline, screenshots, f***ing everything to prove that you are a f***ing bully and a f***ing troll and you do not deserve to be at this table or anywhere near any of us for the way you have treated us. She's like, yeah, I got, the, I got the DMs, I got the screenshots, I got the timeline, I got the proof. Like, it was really incredible. And she's like, you are a troll, and you don't deserve to be at this table. Like, it was intense. Yes. And then, you know, there's a, a short little spat between um, 
Lisa and Monica and a few other of the girls and Monica, but this scene is really about Heather and Monica. I mean, Angie Kay has a great moment when she stands up and she's going to throw the flowers. I know, but it, I hope it doesn't turn out that Angie had something to do with it, which I don't think Angie had anything to do with it. I'm sure she messaged, which they do show the DMs. Yeah, she's I've heard just oh, but laughing. Did you, but did you notice... Look at every single time they mention anything about uh, messages, and they have the proof shown on the screen. Remember when Monica said her family didn't want her? They never showed those texts ever. Just she's just a liar. You can't trust anything. It is she hard says. to trust anything that she said. But uh, so Angie K had a good moment. I, I do love it when they Monica sitting there and she's like looking up, trying to think of how can I get out of this with the least damage to myself. And then she finally just says, "Well." That's not entirely true. Yes, which she says after Heather's second amazing monologue. Oh my monologue. gosh. I don't think you understand something about this group. Listen to me. There's something that you missed out on. We are friends, and we have been through this bullshit before with Jen. For years, we were afraid we'd wake up sick that a lie would be posted and told and spread and exposed and exploited but we were in it with her and we are the type of girls that ride or die and each one of us at different times rode hard and we shut down feelings of doubt and things that didn't add up who you are made no sense but the way you acted was strangely familiar. And the pain that we went through and the way that we were tormented and tortured, I ate shit every day for her. I felt like I had to lie to protect her. I did whatever it took. I went on book tour and defended her and took shit for the fact that she gave me a black eye. What? Wow. Wow. When she's like, one thing that you missed out on is that the four of us, we're friends. Yeah. Like, we've got each other's back. And you know what? We have been through this before with Jen Shaw, where we were constantly worried about what would be posted about us. We were constantly worried about what she would say or how she would react to us. And we're not doing that again. Yeah. She said, I even went on my book tour, traveled the country, and defended her when she gave me a black eye. Yo. Oh, my god! I was like, what else are they going to do here? What else are they going to do? And, and then like, she finishes with, you are... Reality Von Tees. You are Reality Von Tees. I know you're Reality Von Tees. And yeah. that's when Monica goes... That's not true entirely. Which I thought, I thought her response was... I mean, I, I was surprised the first time I saw it that she didn't try to, like, she knew she deny was caught. it. She knew she was caught because she knew that she had the proof. She wouldn't just lie about saying that she had the proof. Yeah. But, so, um, but... <laughs> There was just, and uh, it, it, uh. but let's think about this: a fan-ish of the show, who was an internet troll, <laughs> posting these horrible things about the whole entire cast, not just Jen Shaw. Whether she was the one who made specific posts or not, she was part of the group. She got on the show. And what what I also if she was Jen Shaw's like number one assistant back in the day, then why wouldn't she be the one to have created the count that was supposed to take Jen Shaw down oh, in well, the first place? There, um, Jen Shaw actually did um, uh, uh, file a cease and desist against Reality Von Tees two years ago. Yeah. Wow. So Jen Shaw knew. So a lot of people are like, how do these other women not know? Was there was there a cease and desist? About what what I've seen all on so because I mean every single second I have free I'm I'm <laughs> reading about this, but I saw on the internet that um, Jen Shaw did um, file a cease and desist, and from what I understood, and please forgive me, I'm not a news person and I haven't 
checked my sources, but it looks like it was against Monica. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I don't, don't know. quote me on that. I, I could be giving misinformation, but just go on Instagram. You'll find it. it's not hard to find. Um, but just the fact that she infiltrated this group and got in this group, and she had been part of a, you know an organization of people who were posting negative things about this group and, and, is wild. And the icing on the cake, they're there at this Bermuda trip for Monica's birthday to celebrate her and bring her to her family and stuff. And Dang, like, she, and then you know it, how it's not and like, even over yet. And you know how, like, in Harry Potter, in like book two, there'll be a random reference to something in like one sentence, and then later on in book five, you find out it's like an important part of the whole major story. Mm -hmm. This is when we find out that Monica was there when the clutch was stolen from Meredith Mark's store. Yeah, when Meredith Mark said it was on security footage and they showed it, I was like, this was like two years ago. So she has been a part of the group, a part of the situation, and getting caught in another lie, yes. saying that she had never been to Meredith's store before. So she, there's nothing. Her her character is completely demolished. There, I would not trust her at all. Yeah. Period. It's nothing, hard nothing to because says. right there, I mean, she got caught in a lie. Okay. You know, just right there. But what's funny is what you know what makes Lisa really lose her tipper is when Monica calls her a dumb bitch. I know. Like that that is it. I mean she calls her old and leathery and she calls her Donald Trump and all these other kinds of things. But when she calls her a dumb bitch, that was the end. I love it because you and I have a story about being called Dumb bitch. Calling each other a dumb bitch. So when she said it, I started laughing. I know. Me I was too. like, oh my god. Me too. She's like, you dumb bitch. It was so funny. But man, this uh, episode just won't stop. It will not stop. No, because Monica says, yes, I was involved, but I didn't. I didn't do all of that. So Meredith, who is you know a law person, mm -hmm. says, okay, well then tell us what you did do. And Monica really only cops to posting things about Jen Shaw. Yeah, something simple, something that she could skate out of there the easiest. But if she knew about all of this, she was definitely feeding it, especially being on the inside. And you could tell by her character being on the show this this season, she has spread every single rumor and gossip. It's she wild. has shown who she is in truth as a troll. Now, Monica, should she come back next season? What are your thoughts about Monica as a real housewife of Salt well, Lake City? Well, I don't know if she's if she, if there, she has no friends on the show. How are they going to film together? What if they cast one of Monica's friends and then cast another one of Monica's friends as a friend of? I don't think she has friends. <laughs> Should she be allowed to come back? Oh, I don't know. She's good TV. She hasn't broken really any rules, has she? I I mean, except I don't know for what just the rules trolling, are. except for trolling. I mean, it's so conflicting because uh, if I think of them as humans then no she should not come back that's my friend Heather and you know this woman has caused Heather and these other women who I love from television and from the few interactions that we've had that she's really you know disrupted their lives so that makes me want to go burn her at the stake and, and but then if I think of them all as just these TV characters, mm -hmm. I'm like, Mother Monica came in and swept these girls up, you know, type of thing. <laughs> slay, girl, slay. She slayed. <laughs> yes. So it's hard. I mean, again, uh, it's I, when I think about them as people, it's deplorable. It's hard for me because I've been trolled before, not on a huge level as these women, but there's, and some people are like, well, why do you even read them? Just ignore them. It doesn't even matter. These people are just trying to troll. It's hard when you wake up and you're just starting your day out and you see something horrible written about you from some complete strangers and other people commenting on it. It screws your day up. It period. Does. You are and right. It's hard to not see it because some you need to read comments from people to interact with your fans. So it's hard to not see somebody trying to like troll you. So I understand where these ladies are are, are at because yeah. trolling ruins your day. It puts yeah. you in the bed and not want to interact. And that's all the internet has been a lot lately is just tearing people down in any form Oh, that's all fashion. Twitter is. Twitter is nothing but a nasty, mean people and porn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all so, Twitter is. But, uh, but on, like you said, but on the TV aspect, this is the best 
like best drama season I've they've seen. Ever had. This is the best season <laughs> of Salt Lake so City. So juicy. <laughs> and, and and all season long, I really thought it. I didn't think that it was Monica that made the season so much better. I thought maybe it's just Jen Shaw being gone is what made the season so. Because you know the past two seasons were all about Jen yeah. Shaw. So I didn't really think throughout the whole season. I thought Monica was a great housewife. I thought she was a great addition to the show. Didn't find her all that likable, but I thought she was great on the show. Yeah, I was so but nervous. This is wild. I was so nervous of Salt Lake City starting the new franchise because I'm like, how much drama and stuff could housewives from Utah really like create? Because I mean, even Atlanta and like Potomac. I didn't think Potomac was going to do very well, but Potomac has proved me wrong as well. But um, all these bit, New Jersey and stuff, there's these big things that are happening. And yes, there's been like scandals with the law and stuff, but this is like breaking down another fourth wall. On <laughs> like the we're show. the fifth wall here. Like the fifth, like it's just. There's it, not a roof on it anymore. It just, it literally, these four women, just the four, have gone through. Look at how many people have been gone. Like each season, somebody has been kicked <laughs> off or gone to jail. Yeah. I mean, Salt Lake City is like top it's tier. it's it's hard. It's um it's interesting. It's Candace really Dillard. Started. Candace Dillard made a post that just went I hashtag R H O S C. Just had an I and a dash and then hashtag R H O S C. For real, because like that you the whole episode you're just like what what's gonna happen? I think I know what's gonna happen, and then boom, and then you're like dang, and then boom again with the black eye, and you're like dang, and then boom, the security footage. You're just like, holy crap, are we gonna find out that she's the devil? Not today, Satan. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, uh, a few wrap up things. Jen Shaw has denied all of this from prison, and as we, we just read a little bit ago, plans to sue NBC, Universal, Bravo, Andy Cohen, and Heather Gay. If on the reunion she says that Jen Shaw gave the black eye, which oh yeah, I trust Jen Shaw for sure. Yeah, yeah, she didn't do that. Um, also, <laughs> I I meant to show you today, but you were asleep on the couch, so I didn't get to show you. There's this great video on Twitter, or I uh, and on YouTube, of an argument between Monica and her mom after Angie K's Easter brunch. And her mom is yelling at her, going, you have a job to do. Your job is to get the most screen time as possible. I know that you don't like these women. I know that you're mad, but you're an actress. And it is your job to get as much screen time as possible. And Monica's like, I fell down the stairs. And she's like, well, that's on you. And with, I mean, it's like four minutes long. It's wild. Monica stole Lisa Barlow's ring. No doubt. Monica stole Lisa's. She no probably doubt. took it off, or maybe it fell right in front of her, and she picked that up right away. No because doubt. Because you do not lose a ring in a small woman's bathroom like that with so many people looking for it and never, mm -hmm. ever finding it. Mm -hmm. When she said, I even looked where they put the tampons, that means that she looked where she stuck it up her own pants. Yeah, word. Um, the scene ends with Heather Gay going... Pack your bags and go. I wanted so badly to Meredith to do her, you can leave. A and the thunder starting. A like, reprise, if you yeah, will. Exactly. Like, I would love her to do it with even more vigor this time. Because <laughs> she's she not is. as drunk. But no, it was, um, it was, uh, man, it was really interesting. And Monica, okay, so something about Monica that I've been noticing is, Monica has no identity for herself because she keeps making references to movies and singers songwritings. Yeah, she all like the quoted time. Taylor Swift. Like she said, oh, she's dead, like from Taylor Swift or whatever. And this time she's like, you know, Gossip Girl had to put B spot out on by something. Even Gossip Girl couldn't stay Gossip Girl forever. She only knows how to be pop culture. Yeah, and then she's she brings only, a burn book to the reunion. She, that's the only thing she she has she no identity for herself. She can't she, think for herself. Honey, she don't love herself. Oh no, she don't. Uh, but this is um, I'm I I can't freaking wait <laughs> for the reunion. It's like Christmas, waiting for Christmas all over again. So our bumpers at the end about all of the ladies in their current state. Heather has been relishing her time with all three daughters. Enjoying conversations about life, love, but definitely not sex. 
every time we use that sex blanket that Jen Shaw gave Heather that Heather gave us, <laughs> I think of Heather. <laughs> Heather, I think about you when we have sex on <laughs> Oh my goodness, <laughs> Whitney, <laughs> Whitney, <laughs> could... <laughs> people are like sex blanket. Y'all need to go back a couple seasons. <laughs> yeah, that, that scene when Jen Shaw gives Heather all the sex toys and Heather is terribly uncomfortable with it. But we came out. We were that like, we were there that we were... day. <laughs> yeah. That was, and uh, we took some stuff with us. <laughs> she came. She's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. She's like, with I'm it. not going to use it. I mean, some of that's like a sex blanket's pretty expensive yeah, for a king size bed. Thanks, girl. Our sheets are pristine. <laughs> Speaking Lord. of thinking of sex, Justin, I mean, Whitney continues to navigate the bumpy road of marriage, work, and family with Bobby as her chauffeur. Then to Miss Lisa Barlow, after sending Jack off to the Mission Training Center, Lisa has kept herself busy with her new favorite hobby, poor Henry. I know the, the picture, <laughs> the video of Henry and her sitting at the table, not saying a single word oh, to each other. Poor just Henry. Like, I was like, that editing wasn't nice, you guys, or was it that? He bleak? is getting, no, he is getting all of her attention oh, poor, and he can't take it. That poor kid. And he's yes. hitting that age right now where he's not rambunctious. And because, like, remember the first season he was needed to talk, he needed to be a part of anything. Then the next season, he didn't say a single word all season. <laughs> And he's right there at that age where he does not want to be like with mom because it's not cool. Yeah. Bless his heart. Bless his heart. <laughs> Hold on tight, buddy. We're all here for you. <laughs> <laughs> Angie and Hot Sean have recommitted to working on their marriage, starting with more date nights and alone time. Electra now sleeps in her own bed most of the time. I mean, how old is this girl? I was going to say, is Electra not embarrassed that her friends at school are like, you still sleep with your parents? I would just be embarrassed um, if I was Angie and not having sex with Hot Sean all the time. Yeah, get that girl. I mean, I realize that I have a drive, but like, you are so hot that every time I look at you, I'm like, oh, I can't wait till the next time I get to, you know, again. And I just can't imagine her looking at him and not want to just jump on him all the time. Uh, yeah, we're predators for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um after this is my favorite after a rough winter with her friends and four unbearable days without a bathtub <laughs> meredith went home and immediately upgraded to a jacuzzi in her rental <laughs> amen girl. but that four unbearable days without a bathtub that made me laugh so hard <laughs> How many days did they stay after they kicked Monica out? Do you know? Maybe like two? Maybe that had one? to have been the last day, right? I don't know. I mean, I don't know, y'all. I don't know either. I mean, this season was only 16 episodes long. That's, a that's. I mean, considering, I mean, we've had Palm Springs. We've had oh, yeah. all of the drama with Angie K and Meredith. Like, th there's been plenty going on this season, but it was condensed into only six. I could have used, I could have used maybe two more episodes. If they didn't do supersized episodes and use that right. footage, they would have had that much. True, probably. true. So we wrap it up with Monica, the producer asking Monica, so take me back to that final dinner when you were kicked off the island. <laughs> <laughs> And this this made you, this riled you up so much because she's like, well, there was things that I didn't get to say because I knew that they wouldn't be well received. And you're like, of course she did. Of course she's had time to think about everything that she went. Yeah, I mean, you got so <laughs> well. It's because of that. course she needed to think about what she was going to say, but she didn't have anything to say at that moment. But now that she's had time to make up her lies and excuses, now she's gonna have something to say at the reunion. Girl, I hope you're burned on that book. Oh yeah. Ooh, I'm so irritated with her so, so much. Since arriving home, Monica has not spoken with other the other women, nor her mother. Bull, I call bull. I'm sure they've been scheming and scamming with each other. Uh -huh. with, with her divorce finalized. I don't trust that either. That bitch is not <laughs> married. She is focused on raising her daughters. I don't even trust those are her real children. And has no plans to return to Bermuda. Girl, bye. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I got up in the microphone for that. Listen, we are we have been dying to talk about this. We've been really worked up. I'm not kidding you. I've been watching the episode on repeat. I know, and I'm it's driving me. Oh, it's making me so upset. I'm see I keep seeing everything. Ugh, so um we're gonna have to end this podcast and watch it again. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, y'all, as you were watching this episode oh, sorry. As you were watching this episode over and over and over again, make sure that you're also following us on social media. On Facebook and Instagram, we are The Real House Bears. On Twitter X, we are Real House Bears. You can email us at therealhousebears at gmail.com, and you can buy merch at the website realhousebears.redbubble.com. And you could watch us, y'all. You could even see Godmother Heather Gay come in this episode. <laughs> you could see it on YouTube, and you could see it also on Spotify, y'all. Y'all, Spotify, I know all you kids are like, I'm into the Spotify, yo. Yeah. So get down with the Real House Bears, please. You're in please. review. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and if you you can listen to us anywhere you listen to your podcast, and if you're listening to us anywhere where you can make comments and um, give us a, like a nice cute little rating, we will make you hashtag House Bears, Bears famous. famous. And we haven't really been making people House Bears famous because none of y'all are like making well, any kind of attempts. To, if like, you do interact anything. with us on social media as well, <laughs> we just haven't been very active on social media no. ourselves during the holidays, but. We'll know, get back in the groove. Word. We'll get back into the groove. Well, we're glad to have a new year. A new year. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Okay, love you. Bye.